the, during this conference, a lot of people have spoken about eating a whole food plant-based diet. Um, I was listening to a Dr. Furman lecture from somewhere, and he said something that caught my attention. He said that he has actually been dealing, treating some of the long-term vegans, that he has been doing this a long time, and he has experience with long-term vegans, which is probably the most interesting thing anyone could tell me, because there's nothing I want to know more than what happened to the long-term whole food plant-based diets. And I was concerned that I thought you said something to the effect that there was some concern about some of them doing certain things wrong and ending up with cognitive impairment or dementia. So I don't want to, I'm not sure is that that's what you said, but can you clarify in your work with people that you consider long-term vegans, what has gone wrong? Have any of them gotten dementia or other things and what did they do wrong? And could you tell us about that? Yes, I, I do think I have a unique experience um, in that I've been as a primary care physician, being the doctor for lots of people, especially elderly people, elderly vegans for that community for decades and seeing people to their ultimate demise and developing older and seeing what happens to them. I have huge clinical experience seeing hundreds of people a week and as, the, and as I mentioned earlier, many of my patients came from the early vegans that when the vegan population in America just started in the American Vegan Society and the American Natural Hygiene Society in the 1950s, a lot of the physicians and gurus who were at the top of those people were my, were my mentors. I loved them, these people and I looked up to them and they were my friends. And most of them developed later stage Parkinson's and dementia. And when I had the availability to, to be, be their primary doctor, because I was younger getting into my middle ages and they were elderly and passing away, I found that the major issue was severe omega-3 deficiencies where the DHA levels and the omega-3 index would be even non-existent, zero, one, or two. And so I'm saying that looking at the evidence that it's not just the toxicity and lack of phytochemicals and harmful. There's a lot of things that can cause Alzheimer's and moving to a plant-based diet might reduce 95% of those Alzheimer's and dementia risks, but it thrusts into place a new risk of potential B12 deficiency that can cause dementia and severe DHA deficiency that can cause dementia and cognitive impairment and brain shrinkage. And studies do show that as the omega-3 index goes down, you see both shrinkage of the brain and cognitive impairment with aging. So my experience with scores of individuals, and by the way, there's not much studies on it, but there's animal studies in showing that DHA deficiency makes the brain more sensitized to the potential toxins that can cause Parkinson's disease. And I've seen an epidemic, a mini epidemic of Parkinson's in later life vegans, including we're talking here about not junk food eating vegans. We're talking about these patients of mine and these people I respected and knew as advocates of natural hygiene who were living on a diet of fruits and vegetables and nuts and beans. They were eating super healthfully. They weren't eating junk food and bagels and pasta and salad and oils and they were eating a pretty healthy vegan diet. And I'm saying my evaluation, my experience, and the, um, and the, and the um, research I've looked at and looked into shows that there's a, 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 a vast difference in individual's ability to convert the ALA from walnuts and flax seeds into EPA and DHA, and that there's a wide genetic variability. And whether people are constricting um, fat and eating those high omega-3, whether they're using more, eating less, there's some people are eating a diet. So in other words, I'm saying there's some um, nutritional gymnastics you can do to try to increase the conversion of ALA into EPA and DHA, but nevertheless, what I'm saying that the most overriding factors is individual genetic differences inhibiting some people's ability to make sufficient DHA and keep their omega-3 index above five as they age on a vegan diet that all the, the nutritional gymnastics does not help and that your people are putting themselves at some risk of dementia or even Parkinson's or other neurologic illnesses on a plant on a vegan diet if they don't look at trying to achieve 
a, a normal omega-3 index as part of the whole plant. And that's been too much ignored by people in this community. There's so much denial and religious ferocity of people just wanting to believe what they want to believe and not being conservative and cautious enough and making sure people have nutritional adequacy here. And I've, my whole career, I've been suffering with this because these are people I really cared about and I took care of and I was the primary care doctor and I saw they get into trouble partially because I was not giving them, the, didn't know at that point in my career that omega-3 deficiency could lead to a later life problem on a plant-based diet. So I'm very, so I'm more cautious and conservative obviously now. So how do you make sure that you get enough omega threes? Um, and you keep you're saying omega three DHA. That, what, what are those the same thing? Are they different things? No, and omega. How do you correct? There can be short chain and long chain omega three fatty acids, and you can get adequate short chain omega three called ALA through flax seeds and walnuts and even green vegetables. So, and you have too much omega six fats from especially from oils, it can interfere with the conversion enzymes. So you can't turn the short chain ALA first into EPA and then into DHA. You might convert about 5% of the short of the ALA into EPA and about one or 2% into DHA. And some people's conversion may be sufficient to achieve an adequate amount and an adequate um, omega-3 index without supplementation. But my experience, my measuring of hundreds of people, the studies with that I've been part of supporting all show that there's a huge genetic variability here. And, and, and for a long-term vegan to not supplement or not even check their level and to see where they run is somewhat irresponsible because these people that I'm saying that I followed and I was their primary care doctor for, they lived a long time, but they, what good is living a long time? Like, like Dr. Khan said, if you're dead of a heart attack at 65, you're not going to worry about dementia. But since these people are not dying at 65 and they're living into their 85s, 90, 95 later years, then this becomes more of an issue because who wants to be alive through their 90s with cognitive impairment or Parkinson's? So, I'm, so we're trying to push the envelope of human longevity while at the same time assure people to have neurologic health in their later years. Steve, I'll just add in, you know, to answer your question specifically, there is a blood test, and Dr. Furman's a frequent order, and I've been extremely frequent order, called Omega-3 Index. There's another brand called Omega Check. It's relatively inexpensive. People can actually order it on their own. Now, there is no long-term evidence-based data. There is research, but that proves we should add that to the profile, and the U.S. Preventive Task Force hasn't added it to the profile. But you draw a few thousand of those, you'll see meat eaters and plant eaters just uniformly. It's uh, routine to see ultra low omega-3 blood levels and whether that relies the brain levels isn't clear. There is, I have a SNP, it's called FADS, fatty acid desaturase. I do not convert chia seeds over to EPA and DHA very efficiently. So I do supplement with a little bit of preformed algae-based EPA DHA and I've got my blood level up. I don't, I don't have a whole population of long-term vegans that have had dementia, Joel has a longer you know, experience in this than I have, but you know, being concerned about your patient's global nutritional status uh, you know, is appropriate for all of us, of course. Uh, Dr. Williams, you have thoughts? You're the king of nutrition. I'm really just learning from you guys. Um, you're way out of the uh, cardiovascular arena. Uh, the only insights that I would give you about the cardiovascular system is the uh, sort of strange things that have happened with fish oil and the heart with these trials blowing up. Um, the, we, there apparently is not a lot of value. I still use them when the people have marked hypertriglyceridemia because I don't want them to get pancreatitis or you know uh, a, a small dense LDL issue. Um, but for the cardiovascular system, we really have... Uh, run aground uh, essentially with multiple trials. The one trial that was positive um, where they isolated the EPA uh, from the DHA, it gave EPA only, which uh, Dr. Furman uh, just informed us would probably not be a good idea long-term. Uh, that was a positive trial. And then subsequent omega-3 trials that had the combination said that the reason that that was a positive trial was because they used placebo as mineral oil instead of corn oil. And that mineral oil was dyslipidemic and artificially increased the number of events. 
uh, in the uh, in the placebo arm so that they could reach a statistical significance. Um, so I, I think we have to admit that in cardiology, uh, we really have not shown the benefit very clearly. Um, but you know, the brain brain health is another another big deal. And keep in mind that with these studies, these cardiologic studies are using fish oil and in pharmacologic concentrations that we're not really talking about here. The difference between using it to treat triglycerides, using it to do have some pharmacologic effect. Here, we're just preventing a deficiency. I'm mean, using much lower dosages. I think the, you know, with almost any nutrient, taking too much of something and when you don't need it is not gonna show benefit and could even potentially show harm. And taking too, like being too low in vitamin D is not good if you're deficient but you can supplement yourself to being too high and that's not going to be good either. So it's the same thing with, you know, so we're talking here about making sure people have nutritional adequacy, but not using these things as pharmacologic um, things to produce, to reduce the, um, pr to reduce or to change the symptoms of disease. We want to make sure nobody puts themselves into long-term problem by being chronically deficient in something. And these studies are not studying vegan populations and who are not eating. And some of the studies are done in people already eating a, a lot of um, preformed animal fats and EPA and DHA. The point I'm making here is when you isolate this data to a vegan population, then we see a much more broad spectrum of differences um, in in, um, in both deficiency, adequacy, and excess. So we can be all over the place, but we see a much higher pre um, probability of deficiency. We saw about 60% of long-term vegans to have a, a omega-3 index below four, about 60% had a level below four, and ideally you probably wanna be above five. I agree with that.